Hi everyone, it's John Hensley here with a, another podcast and in this uh, 12th edition uh, we're going to talk about the importance of getting stance right, getting distance right, getting foot position right because the best fighter in the world who has a great punch, a great kick, a great strike, a great takedown can do so because he or she understands the importance of good footwork, the importance of body positioning, the importance of distance. Usually uh, fighters who are aggressive and, and good with punches and kicks can still fall foul of an opponent who can break them down with a, with a well-timed and, and placed uh, shot. And this is because they've committed everything, the, the uh, aggressive opponent to landing that that killer blow and maybe early on in the uh, exchange and this can be a winning strategy I'm not going to knock it necessarily but I also think um, you know you're running into a shot unnecessarily and if you've got a student who's been practicing on uh, conditioning really hard like the wooden dummy conditioning or hitting the rice bag like in karate uh, or even uh, punching sandbags or gravel bags you know your hands get really hard and um, even if they've got uh, a glove on them like an MMA style glove it's gonna really hurt when it when it connects so why do we risk uh, all that just to land a telling blow early on it, it may not be a good idea but the fighter who understands that the, the punch and the kick is actually the last part, the last component of an effective and uh, successful technique is going to win more often than not, is going to be successful uh, more often than not. So the styles that have forms in them uh, like karate katas or Wing Chun uh, Kung Fu forms or um, uh, taekwondo, uh, I think I might get the word wrong, I think it's called POOMS, is it? P-O-O-M-S-E, those, those sort of patterns. Um, they uh, give you a structure to work to. Now I have younger students who actually got really bored with this form practice, they just wanted to do the, the fighting and the problem was just they kept running into things that were unnecessary for them to do. Stylistically they might have looked good but then they, they just walked into the substance and uh, their arguments were you know a little bit fluffy they'd say things like well you're taller than me, you're faster than me, you're stronger than me, you're more accurate than me and and the truth is is that, that those elements might be true but without their substance, without their uh, uh, really working hard on stance work and footwork and positioning that's why they were running into trouble plus the fact that uh, given their given style that they hadn't really um, learnt the forms well enough um, and uh, these, are, these are factors that you have to overcome if you're going to be successful in sparring because otherwise technically uh, you're going to look good punching a bag or kicking a bag but you, you're not going to be really effective as a, as a fighter you know you, you can wing it against some fighters but not, not others I would say you might win a good few fights and then you'll start losing one here and there and then you'll soon get into a rut and um, suddenly all that aggression uh, got exposed it, it become nothing When you're practicing on a, a wall bag or a standing kit bag or a wooden dummy, you need to be at the right distance every single time. To use a driving analogy, it's good if you're in the appropriate gear, if you're, if you're driving a manual car uh, all the time. Otherwise, everything else is it's poor driving technique, it's poor, um, it's a reduced ability. You won't be able to do what you need to do. So you wouldn't stand so close to the dummy that you couldn't work your arms or you wouldn't stay in the same position all the time for a kick if it meant that your kick was compromised you'd adjust your position accordingly and these are not wholesale um, differences they're like it could be half a step back or a quarter of a step back or an eighth of a step forward they are minor adjustments but they have a major impact 
And wouldn't you want to have a major impact in your, in your fighting? Wouldn't you want to have a major impact on your grading? Wouldn't you want to show that you know your, your stuff, you know your level, you know your skill set uh, beautifully? Isn't, isn't that what we should be striving for uh, in martial arts? So the distance is one of the things that I used to do in lesson one where with a student and would still do as part of the online training. Um, what about footwork? You see some styles will be dependent on kicking from the rear like in Wing Chun, although there are front leg front kicks as well. In Jeet Kune Do, it's flipped on its head and you'll work more off the front lead where you're punching with the front arm or the lead arm. You're kicking with the, the lead leg more often than not. And there'll be other styles that like karate that, that utilize both um, and, and also Taekwondo, I would say, uh, use the front leg and the rear leg um, in equal measure. So probably Taekwondo uses the legs a lot more than hands, um, which is all fine. But you've got to have your footwork correct. Again, the forms allow you to, to fix these deficiencies. Look at your position on the wooden dummy where your footwork can be off uh, as soon as you move away from that center line. So um, if you can fix that a little bit sooner uh, in your training, early on in your training, that's good. And a good instructor will point this out early. And I would even say they'll do this in a group format. Because if they're doing this uh, only on a one-to-one -one level, um, you need to look at that as a student or prospective student. You think, well, shouldn't they have pointed this out a little bit earlier? Um, and I say that all instructors uh, need to raise their level too, just because they're a certain level or they won a certain amount of titles or they were taught by somebody going back years and years ago. Uh, you still need to raise your level. So this is very uh, important. Um, so we've got uh, footwork down, we've got distance down where you, you know, you understand how close you need to be to your opponent. To summarize that very quickly, think of it like green light, uh, amber light, red light. In green light, uh, you're safe from the opponent's kicks, headbutts, strikes, punches. On the amber level, he can probably reach you with a kick. And on the red level, he can reach you with a kick, a punch, a grab, a strike, a headbutt. Ask yourself when you're fighting, are you in the green position because you want to be in that position or are you in the red position because you believe that by doing so, you're going to be the one to land the telling blow and the dangerous strike. Because that's if you're in the red position at that point, then it needs to be because you're there and not because your opponent drew you into it. So you see, if you have these things down, speed, power become less important. It's not that they are important, they are vitally important, but they're not everything. And someone who really understands um, street fighting will understand that he can punch harder than anyone else, but if he can't land the shot, if he's not accurate, if he's not fast enough, if he doesn't understand feints and how to break his opponent down, he's not going to land those shots. Similarly, you could be the fastest uh, one on the wooden dummy or, or the kickback. And, you know, it's great to have high speed, but again, you need the accuracy. And if he is not there when you kick, then the, the whole venture is, is pointless. It's, it's failed completely. And this is why the, the distance uh, and the footwork and the body positioning are so vital. You need to get these down more than fast kicks or fast punches. Um, and that might be the, the boring way to approach it, but it's the correct way to approach it. And over time you'd realize that, you know, I am correct um, on that one. So when you're practicing uh, today or in your next lesson, um, by all means, throw your whole heart and whole spirit into your punch and into your kick and into your block. But Take a glance at your footwork, take a glance at your distance control, take a glance at your body positioning. And it's just these little things, a millimeter here and there, a centimeter here and there, maybe an inch here and there, that can be the difference. You hear about it when people have been 
hurt in a you know a really bad situation like they've been shot or knifed and sometimes they say oh if it was just an inch to the left it would have punctured his heart or whatever and that person would have died so we don't want to be with that person we want to be the one that understands um, proper distance proper footwork proper body positioning so that's it I'm going to wrap it up have a good uh, training day uh, let me know what you think about that in the comments if you agree or, or disagree with me and I will talk to you again soon have a good week